Hi, I'm David Parker, and I'm here with my fellow Vizio MVP, Chris Roth. And Chris is going to show us some of the wonderful things you can do to create dynamic text within Vizio. Thanks, Dave. You know, there's a lot of information in the document that isn't always immediately visible, be it the size of a shape, the page number you're on, the number of pages in the document, or, of course, shape data behind a shape. And now, there's a, with just a few mouse clicks, it's very easy to display some of that information in the text of a shape. And mm -hmm. that text will be dynamically linked to whatever quantity or information that you want to display, so it will update. Mm -hmm. So let's dive right in and see a simple example. Okay. So I've got a rectangle here. It looks really fancy, but that's just smoke and mirrors and shading and stuff. It's just a rectangle. And if I double click on it, you can see it's just got some text in here that I'm going to replace with something a little bit more interesting. So you and I always call this insert field. Mm -hmm. And why? Because you go insert field and you pick from some quantity. So I'm interested in the size of the shape right now. So I'm just going to click on the geometry category select width, and note that, boy, I probably don't need that much accuracy, so I'll pick on data format that is a little bit cleaner. So we'll show two dis decimal places, and we'll show the units too. So I know you use the metric system, I use the imperial system. We want it clear that our shape is 4.5.6.7.13 mm -hmm. inches uh, wide. Okay, but is that the width or the height? Because then I might come back and I forget which it is. Can you? Now that's Help. a good point. That's a good point. You can actually mix dynamic fields with normal text. And instead of double clicking this time, I'm going to use the text tool and move the cursor to the beginning of the, of the text and type in width. Oops, width. Is that the German version? Yeah, <laughs> width. It's past tense of width. Mm -hmm. So now, while I'm in here typing, notice that if I hit the cursor one space to the left, it jumps over that entire field. There's no way to select individual characters mm -hmm. on that. That's another hint that this is a dynamic field. There's something going on there that Visio is managing, whereas these other ones you can select individual characters. So we'll click away. We'll get the pointer tool. And now we can tell that this box is six inches in width. Okay. So that's, very, that's a very simple example. But more interesting is uh, shape data behind yeah, that shape. Yeah. So we've got a network shape here, a laptop, and it just has some static text on it. Let's do something more interesting to that. So you can see we've got shape data fields in here. We've got all sorts of different data ready to go. Let's display some of that data in the shape. So I'll just double click again, clear out that text, go to insert field, as we usually do. And right at the top of the category list, we've got shape data just waiting to be displayed in text. So we'll pick location. I can hit enter, and we can do the same thing again and pick, oh, let's do, let's do the room number. And we can add some labels on there too. Room and loc. We'll just abbreviate that. Okay. So now we've got the shape data displayed in the text. If you don't believe me, let's go over and edit some of these fields. So let's change Bellevue to Seattle. And we'll change the room number to B4. And sure enough, mm -hmm. those are up updating. So there are just a few mouse clicks, and we've got some uh, you know, Visio sh smart shape behavior yeah, right in front of us. Good. It's nice to know how to do this by hand, as you might want to call it, yeah. but there's actually some pre-built shapes in Visio so. that allow you to do this more quickly. So let's go to the more shapes Visio extras category. And right at the top of the list is a stencil called callouts. Now, top of the list, but bottom of the stencil, you'll see there's custom callout one, two, and three. And these are very interesting little shapes. Now, let's move this out of the way a little bit so we have some room you'll see there's a little yellow control handle. And what you need to do is drag that onto a shape that has some shape data behind it, as this network shape does. We let it go, and Visio detects that, ah, we've made a link to a shape that has data. And it lets me pick the shape data fields from the laptop that I want to show in the callout. So we'll go down and see what we've done. We'll match what we did in the text before, location and room, and show the property name so we have a bit of a label next mm -hmm. to the value. Move the call out with the shape, that's fine. Now let's do a return so that we have separate lines for each piece of shape data. So that's a little bit small. Let's bump up the size. And you can see that when we move the laptop around, the call out displays the information in the text. And it, is it dynamic as well? 
Uh, yes, it is. So let's go, we've got the laptop selected. Most important, it's, the shape data isn't in the call out, it's in the laptop. Come over here, we'll change the location to Redmond. And I'll hit tab twice down to the room and we'll do something ominous like X9999. Hit return and you can see not only is the text that we did earlier updating, but the link to the call out shape as well. So another sort of style or category of, of inserted dynamic mm -hmm. information that I want to show off. And well, it has to do with page numbering. So first I'll just zoom in just a little bit and double click to get into the text. There's nothing really to overwrite here, but where, where are we going to go? Insert, Insert field. field, sing it. <laughs> and we'll say we want page information this time. So it's always nice to know what what page number you're on. So we'll put that in there and you could type of or something. I'll just type a slash in this case and back to insert field and page info and we'll pick the number of pages just so this will help people know how far along in the document we mm -hmm. are. Now this is all good on page one. We know we're on page one of four but something interesting happens when we cut the shape and go to the background page, the one with the italic text back here. Awesome. Scroll down a little bit, paste that right here, and just line that up on top. Now the background page is shared by all the foreground pages, so what it's, and it says zero of four right now. That's because background pages don't count mm -hmm. in the grand scheme of page numbering within a Visio document. But when we go back to page one, something magic happens. That field knows that it's being viewed through a foreground page, and Visio is smart enough to update that number. When we go to page two, we've got page two of four, when I go to page three, I'll zoom in just a little bit using my favorite keyboard shortcut. Three of four and a four of four. So there you go. And you can't do that with data graphics, can you, Chris? No, you can't. Yeah, well, that's great, Chris. Thanks very much for showing us all this uh, dynamic data within, or dynamic text, really, within Visio. Thank you. Thank you.